This is one of the wildest stories I've ever heard, and it is truly the ultimate medical crime mystery. It's the case of Patty Stallings, and if you haven't heard this one, you better strap in, because it is spooky science series time. In 1989, three-month-old Ryan Stallings could not stop vomiting. His mother, Patty, rushes him to the hospital, but in the panic of everything, she takes a wrong exit and ends up in Cardinal Glennon instead of her intended destination of St. Louis Children's Hospital. The doctors run some tests, and the tests come back definitive. There is ethylene glycol, aka antifreeze, in his blood. Tragically, Ryan dies six days later and Patty is arrested for his murder. The evidence seemed airtight. Two separate labs confirmed the ethylene glycol in Ryan's blood, plus the police discover half-empty bottles of antifreeze in the Stallings' basement. Patty had also been alone with Ryan for just a few minutes during a supervised visit right before he got sick again. That was enough for the courts. Patty was convicted of first-degree murder and was sentenced to life without parole. Then everything unravels. While Patty sits in prison, she learns she's pregnant again and gives birth to her second son, DJ. He is immediately placed in foster care. Then at two weeks old, DJ starts experiencing the exact same symptoms as Ryan, vomiting, lethargy, labored breathing, and he is rushed to the ER as well. But here is what's different. Patty is in prison, so she couldn't have poisoned him. And DJ ends up at a different hospital, St. Louis Children's Hospital, the one that Patty originally tried to take Ryan to. Here, the doctors run different tests and discover that DJ has something called methamalonic acidemia, or MMA, a rare genetic disorder. People with MMA are missing a single protein called cobalamin adenosyl transferase. Without it, they can't metabolize proteins properly. Their bodies accumulate propionic acid instead, which is a toxic metabolite. Basically, the breast milk and formula Patty was feeding her sons was turning into poison inside their bodies. And here's a molecular nightmare. Propionic acid and ethylene glycol differ by just a few carbon atoms. On 1990s lab equipment, they look nearly identical. But the story isn't over. Months later, a biochemist named Dr. William Sly sees Patty's case on unsolved mysteries. Something doesn't add up for him. So he requests Ryan's blood samples and runs a gas chromatography test, a more sophisticated test than what the original labs used. And the results clearly showed propionic acid and not antifreeze. To test his theory, Sly sent samples loaded with propionic acid to seven other labs, half of the labs misidentified propionic acid as antifreeze. On this evidence, Patty was released after serving two years. All charges dropped, millions won in settlements, but Ryan was gone and DJ would die from complications due to MMA in 2013 at just the age of 23. We have 20,000 proteins running an invisible assembly line in our bodies right now. MMA patients lack just one, just one.